Hello everybody, this is not what I expected to be doing at uh, whatever time it is. I believe it is about 8.40 at night. Um, it is late and I'm wearing sunglasses because YouTube still identifies my face as a child. Come on YouTube, I'm not a kid. Um, today what we're doing is we're looking at uh, something I did a couple months ago. Um, this is my science fair project actually. The reason why I haven't uh, done uh, uploaded a video in a while is because of school and it's a lot easier to watch 20 videos than it is to make a single video. Um, so that's really the only reason. Um, schoolwork, yes, you're expecting that likely. Um, things are winding down at my last year in middle school, so that's exciting. Um, but uh, as the year concludes or gets closer to conclusion, work is getting tighter. So here, uh, I'll just jump into this, um, was my science fair project, which paper airplane flies the furthest. Uh, there you can see a group of five paper airplanes. Yes, I was testing which paper airplane design flies the furthest. I actually had multiple independent variables, things I was changing, but I was changing them at different times so I could test for multiple different things. Uh, this is by me censoring my name. Uh, the paper airplane timeline. Uh, yeah, oh, I was a little off. So Chinese kites were in f 5th century BC. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci's ornithopter was in uh, 1485 AD. Uh, Jack Northrop's uh, common design for the paper airplane was made in 1930s, that region. And then today is just the common one, as we know it, and, uh, popularized for children. Um, which paper airplane designs were tested? From boeingfellows.prat.duke.edu, um, I used four different designs suggested by <laughs> science teacher. Uh, the designs were known as the arrow, dragonfly, bullet, and interceptor. The other designs from the website were incompatible with the launcher I was using. Uh, I used the stable paper airplane uh, from worsome.com. Uh, that was just simply to be able to have a fifth because if I test four, that's not as interesting as five. So there you can see all the different designs there. You can see uh, some of them have interesting concepts. I would think the dragonfly is the most interesting to look at here because it's probably the most different of all of them. Um, here you can see the different cutouts for them. Uh, those are from the PDF files. Uh, and that lines up with them all, except for stable, which wasn't a PDF file, that was a video. Um, here were the materials. I think describing the process of how I made this would be a lot harder. Um, basically what I did was I took four wooden planks, I used one as a base, and I disaligned two of them to create a track of sorts, and I used a plastic cable staple to hold a rubber band in place that would pull back and launch the paper airplane forward. Which is hard to explain, but if you see it in action, that will probably be more useful. Uh, there was the tools required to make it, and the launching mechanism. Uh, it's interesting because this took multiple iterations to create. Um, I used a Lego paper airplane launcher, which is defunct, which means it no longer works. And I also used a rubber band wooden paper airplane launcher which is um, the one that ended up working for me, and that was a lot better. So you can see there's some interesting things. I even created some specifications. So this is the design for the Lego, because, you know, this is actually from an official Lego book. Uh, it's like interesting things to do with your creation, and I would say it would have worked if I used different models. Uh, the design specifications for the uh, launching mechanism that didn't work. Uh, so you can see the launcher track width was about 0 0.8 centimeters wide and it was, okay there's a lot of measurements here that you can look at. I will not bore you by doing them all out. Now this took some sophisticated editing to put all these in. My science teacher was impressed by the effort I put in here uh, to make these arrows and these things here and like look at the way the uh, lever is like it shows the state of it being forward and backward that was overlaying two pictures. Design process for the rubber band launching mechanism. So here you can see the rubber band launcher track width 
which is 0 0.7 centimeters wide. Um, I, I hope you can see better now how this one worked. It was uh, two, there was like a gap between two slats of wood that you could be able to put the sort of fuselage part of the paper airplane inside. Uh, you can see the side view of its launching. Uh, there was the rubber band which you would pull back and I would pull it back between two distances uh, which would be the uh, independent variables I'd be testing in along with the different airplane designs. Uh, the design process for making this was uh, screwing those bases on and screwing them together. So the hypothesis was that the aero paper design will fly the furthest. Uh, I gave a quantifiable numbers in my hypothesis because I believe that was what the rubric said. I may have misinterpreted that. Then I gave some about the average. You can look over this more if you'd like. So here's my variables. My independent variable was the paper airplane design. The dependent variable is the distance traveled by the paper airplane. There was a second independent variable, but it was tested separately, which was the rubber band pullback distance. The constants were the mass of the paper, the position of measuring tape, position of incline of launcher, and etc. because there were likely many more. So the procedure was to fold the paper airplane design, use the launcher with all constants equal, test each design five times per both rubber band launch distances, record the flight distances with measuring tape, calculate the mean distance traveled per design per pullback distance. Okay, observations and designing complications. Uh, this is pretty complex, but um, I'll shorten it. Uh, the Dragonfly design works similarly to a glider and is more stable at slower speeds, which means when it was pulled back further, which increased its velocity, uh, it began to do loop-de-loops. And the bullet uh, did barrel rolls when launched from the orange starting position. Uh, this may be due to an undetectable imperfection and I said parallelism here. I should have said symmetry. You see, I tend to have a way with words. I don't know how I made that mistake. Parallelism is a word I made up. Likely. Uh, you'll see in editing here if it exists. Um, the Some of the paper airplanes design uh, launched slightly askewed, uh, causing them to not fly in a perfect straight line because this is also likely the same reason as the cause of the loop-de-loops. Um, here's the data measurements. I won't bore you by saying this all out, but you can look at the average. Um, the average of all of the uh, blue pullback distance was um, 209 centimeters, and the average of the orange pullback distance was 408.48 centimeters, which was, I would say, almost double. It's not completely double, but it's close. Um, so you can see which ones here improved the best, which ones improved the worst. Um, it's interesting how some of these performed, I must say. So you can see these analysis. I did these for every single one. Um, my hypothesis was partially correct. You can see this. Yeah, fly similarly to a glider. Lots of these were observations as well in the analysis. Um, yes, it was the fastest design indeed, which was noticeable. Uh, not really, I didn't measure the distance. I, I mean, I did not measure the speed that the bullet traveled at. I could have, but I, that would have been a lot more effort. I could have calculated how fast it was moving by seeing the time and distance it covered, but that would have been a lot of effort, and um, I would not pour th put through, I would not do that. Um, the, yeah, okay, uh, analysis for the interceptor. Uh, it was very well balanced as it flew. Uh, this is due to the stabilizer that prevents it from yawing much either way. Uh, this is actually the one that my science teacher had recommended for me to use. 
and so I did and this actually was kind of impressive with how stable it was. The stable um, flew smoothly without yawing much either, similar to the interceptor, um, maintaining a fairly constant pitch. It did not like pitch up and down much. Um, so here you can see the analysis for the, the blue pullback distance and the orange pullback distance. Uh, here are the charts, which you can see. Uh, it appears that the blue numbers are like the blue chart goes higher, but you must look at the numbers here and you can see that the orange numbers go to a higher range than the blue do. So here you can actually see the uh, dragonfly orange was the worst of all. And that was actually being pulled back from a further distance than the uh, dragonfly blue. Here you can see that the arrow completed best for both pullback distances. Uh, this is often, this is probably why it's used so often because it's convenient to make. And look at how well it flies. It got best for two different pullback distances with a rubber band. Uh, so conclusion, overall averages. You can see that I, I got averages. Um, look at this conclusion. It's good, I think. You can read it can't you? So here's my bibliography. I think legally, if I were to do this presentation, I'd have to show you this. So look at this. It's in, I think, APA format. And that's it. Mom, mom,